Hi, I'm Alan, and welcome to another Build Bio by Revival Cycles. This is the bike we call the Revival Grunt. There's a company here called Vulcan. Vulcan's known to make power sports vehicles with an emphasis on adventure and all-terrain riding. Think electric transportation meant to live on the ranch or go with you on your next fishing trip. They approached us uh, with the desire to take a small electric off-road style bike that they have um, and do a custom version of it, customize it. Working with a company that's based in Austin definitely has its benefits. It helped the relationship between Revival and Vulcan take off pretty quickly. We took a few trips to their HQ and assembly warehouse, test rode some of their new prototypes, and they came out to the handbelt show. It was important to get to know each other as well as possible to ensure that the bike ended up being exactly what they were looking for. So we got a pre-prototype version, which isn't the first time we've had that happen, but what it means is it's a rougher bike. We get to play with it, we get to ride it. It's certainly functional. It gives us an idea of what's gonna happen further down the line. We spent a month or so just riding, taking notes on the bike, we had to really strike a balance between form and function. Something we're used to doing, but in this case, it was a unique challenge because most bikes don't look the way the grunt does. It started off as a somewhat tame looking, wide, big tire, off-road machine. You know, something like the Honda Fat Cat we all wanted as kids, but of course, fully electric. When I first saw these, I was inspired because uh, as someone who grew up going to the ranch on the weekends, it looked like a really worthy ranch vehicle. By that I mean, it's not built to be a motocross bike, it's built to cross the field comfortably with lots of traction and get you where you want to go. Add electric power, plenty of torque, and this thing looks fun. So they gave us this bike and asked us to kind of do our magic, which we did. At Revival, we're really starting to embrace the electric revolution and electrification of motorcycles. There's a lot of reasons to love it, not just because it's a trend or because it's hot now, but because in a lot of ways it's superior. Because there was a concept, it went to idea, and it went to production really, really quickly by comparison to what we usually do. First, we started by uh, designing uh, the shape, the overall shape of the bike. What's great about building an electric bike, though, is that you can do almost whatever you want. You don't have to worry about cooling, uh, nearly as much. You don't have to worry about exhaust. It's just kind of freeing when you build an electric bike. We've done a few electric bikes, but this by far was the like most ambitious one we've done. So we designed uh, with Ed Boyd, who is of the fame of having designed with us the Ducati Fuse that we did. With Ed, we designed overall shapes. This was generally what I was wanting it to be. He made it even cooler and smoother and nicer so we could uh, essentially cover what was there, and that means the battery and the motor and all of that, but make it a little more aggressive looking. By covering up the electric components, we were able to change the visual weight of the bike and also add some mystery to the build. The first time you see it, there's this sense of not knowing exactly what's going on under the body panels. This, of course, was easier said than done. We found very quickly that marrying the existing frame with our own panels was a little more complicated than we initially thought can tell that it's quite shapely and by that I mean she's a big girl right she's kind of she's kind of wide uh, we wanted to slim down the tail section so we immediately knew we were going to get rid of the rear subframe and reimagine how that was done by changing up the rear subframe it also opened up the door to change the rear suspension so we went with a much more functional uh, longer travel rear shock we used an Ulan's KT303 and man did it help. Really, the rear subframe was built with smaller diameter tubing to uh, accommodate the shape of the CAD rendering that we put together with that. After tacking everything in place, we decided to add reinforcement to the subframe and really make it much tougher than it would have been from the factory. Once the frame was complete, you could really see where the rest of the bike was gonna head. We built the full bodywork, like I said, in CAD, and then had all the mounting points for the body 
3D printed and a really tough, uh, usable plastic that we could use to attach fiberglass panels to. We worked with a company here locally and that does guitar cases called Calton Cases. To have those fiberglass panels manufactured for the first time ever, to have someone else do our body work, it was kind of a cool idea. So it's using a composite of carbon fiber and fiberglass was kind of the idea. Fiberglass layout work is certainly an art form. Almost as much work as doing aluminum body shaping, but uh, yeah, a different beast altogether. So it was kind of fun. Getting a consistent thickness on the fiberglass panels proved to be a bit more work than we initially thought it was gonna be. In hindsight, maybe we could have just printed the entire body using uh, 3D printing. That's what, something we might do next time because I'm really into that idea. But we had a really professional shop that actually specializes in building guitar cases that are like world-renowned guitar cases. They're really nice. I actually ended up wanting one after seeing their operation. And we had them make the overall fiberglass body shapes. Then we reworked all of them with a lot of hand work to make it all fit. Oversights in the design process required quite a bit of reverse engineering the panels to make them all fit together. It worked really hard to integrate the 3D printed attachment uh, pieces that we had made and um, attach them to the bodywork and then make it all be flush. As with all builds, it took a team effort to really be resilient, fight the challenges that were necessary to get the bike done, learn new skills, and then troubleshoot the problems while we were building it. The challenge is always worth it when it's done. Regardless from there, we took the factory swing arm, inverted it, polished it, used an Ullens rear shock with all new mounting points for that on the swing arm and on the subframe. We polished the factory aluminum wheels, powder coated the center of those wheels white, and then mounted a much more aggressive tire to it. Something that was, I don't know, it, it's more like a tractor tire, I get it, but it's really just a really aggressive ATV tire. From there, we mounted up a set of dual headlights that we powder coated to match in the white with LED headlights inside for kind of a, a cohesive look, I think, with the bodywork. We took the factory fender that they had, cut it down completely, reworked it, painted it to match, and then did this kind of, I don't know, groovy paint scheme. Brought up by Ed uh, in the initial renderings, uh, I picked the colors that I thought were complimentary. All painted and put together by Jay Abate over at Moto J Refinishes. A little less macho than what we normally do, let's just put it that way. We then integrated an LED tail light into the back section of the tail section. We hand shaped and formed a foam um, seat and then covered that foam bodywork with Alcantara. The other thing worth mentioning are the pegs. So the factory pegs wouldn't have had a place with this bodywork, they were covered up by that. But we uh, machined out a bracket to help it bolt on with that unique bolt pattern that's at the tip of the swing arm or the front pivot of the swing arm. And then a uh, hand-shaped stainless uh, solid uh, rod and polished it and then welded it to the new machine bracket. And I think it turned out really, really nice. It's one of my favorite parts of the bike. And really, that's the bike. It's all put together. We did have to remount the electronics and a lot of the, the motor controller and even the battery box a bit to make it all work inside the factory frame. But we wanted to hide all that and kind of make it look like it you know, didn't exist to give it a more futuristic, uh, streamlined uh, look. And I think it really works. So now the bike is improved with better suspension, tougher body work, uh, an even sexier shape. And I can attest to the fact that it's even more fun to ride now than it was before. Uh, I really want to cruise it around town, but it's not really street legal. But regardless, I think it's time to take it for another ride. Now's the time of video where most people ask for money or donations or whatever. I'm not going to ask you for that. What I'm going to say to you is, if you want to see more videos and you want to learn more of what we've learned, and you want to see a deep dive into a lot of these topics, go to our website and buy something. We sell everything from motorcycle gear, helmets, uh, motorcycle parts, specialized tools. We sell lots of things and they've all taken us years to figure out what the best stuff is and we figured it out. So go to revivalcycles.com. There's some really good stuff there. Everything from like kick-ass hand grips from Posh to Radiance LED lighting and everything in between. We want to teach you what we know, but this stuff takes time and it takes real effort to make these videos and make them good for you guys. So go support us by helping yourself to the cool stuff you already need. And it helps us because we make a little bit of profit and then we can justify doing more videos. Thanks for your support.